Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com. Bringing good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal, market analyst at CFDs.com. Bringing you a review of the European markets for the Thursday, the eighth of uh, September, two thousand and sixteen. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal signals and market updates from leading providers. You can download the app from the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Uh, also, uh, you can visit site www.tradesignal.com for links. Okay. In terms of uh, Asian markets, then. In Asian markets, uh, overnight, you had the Nikkei lower. Uh, we still have the USDJPY languishing at the 101 level, which, again, should signify risk off. But given this market's lackluster, uh, light volume, holiday, uh, obviously snooze, uh, markets certainly aren't responding. Also, given the fact that we have central banks on tap this week, we have Mr. Draghi today. Everybody is uh, holding out for that potential QE juice. Okay, Yesterday, Mr. Carney certainly provided that juice to a large extent. And hence the reason why we've seen the FTSE back up to the 6880 zone. Okay, now in terms of um, the Nikkei obviously down, therefore in indicating risk off. Uh, China's more or less flat. Hang Seng was flat, but the Hang sorry the Shanghai was flat, but the Hang Seng certainly higher. Okay, and that's on the back of uh, Chinese imports and exports slightly better than expected. But again, that should ind indicate negative for equities, given the fact that there's lack of stimulus now going forward. So China's going certainly going to find it hard to potentially cut further rates, so and also is going to find it hard to uh, potentially justify further QE. And we all know that this market really relies and lives upon QE. That really is the uh, the blood supply of this uh, of this uh, uh, equity markets right now. So again, that certainly is indicated uh, towards a bearish stance. Okay. Also with Mr. Draghi as well, he's expected to. Um, Certainly not uh, provide the QE juices as well, given the fact that the um, the GDP numbers out in the eurozone overall generally are decent, okay, or more or less in line. Although uh, the German DAX certainly has started to uh, started to collapse. So again, that certainly is something that we need to uh, keep on our radar. That's all I can say for now. Keep on the radar. Uh, but again, having said that, it's given that the equity markets certainly have pushed uh, as high as they have over the over this summer period. It's a, a pullback or a snapback certainly is long, long overdue. Okay, so again, going back to the economic data rather than my own opinion, you have the uh, GDP data from um, from uh, Japan overnight, more or less uh, coming in slightly better than expected on a quarter on quarter basis. Okay, uh, bank lending slightly weaker. Okay, investments in Japanese stocks 1.9 billion, impressive. Okay, in yen. Okay, so in terms of Australia, or trade balance slightly better than expected. Exports stronger, trade balance slightly better. Imports more or less flat though, so bear that in mind. Okay, that generally isn't a good sign for the economy. Uh, okay, now in terms of trade balance from China, trade balance data is slightly uh, on the weaker side. Having said that, the exports uh, still minus 2.8%. It was the imports that really um, increased, and that certainly does uh, bode well for European uh, obviously equities to a large extent. Although having said that, uh, one could argue that 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 certainly has been factored in already, given the efficient market hypothesis. Okay, non-farm payrolls on uh, quarter quarter basis came in line for for France. Okay, and uh, we're all looking forward to this ECB interest rate decision. And again, the consensus really is no more QE or no additional QE, uh, no rate cuts either. Okay, so if individuals have been short covering going into this, certainly will be uh, interested to see what the reaction will be. Now let's have a look at the technical picture, and uh, and we'll certainly gauge the reaction. So from my understanding and my uh, insight here on the daily chart, the German DAX still remains uh, at resistance and holding resistance. You can see we have we failed to go back to the pivot high at 10,800. Okay. Political uncertainty at home, okay, with Miss Merkel. She certainly has concerns, okay, with regards to her losing to the anti-immigration party. And German data has been weak all week, okay. So again, certainly cause for concern there in terms of Germany. And if Mr. Draghi obviously fails to do additional QE, which is expected, that certainly doesn't look uh, bode well for the German DAX. And as you can see in the daily chart here, you have a rising contracting wedge pattern, okay. So again, uh, the rally itself is being questioned now. So rising contracting wedge pattern generally is considered to be bearish. Daily chart, obviously bearish. The 10 minute chart, you certainly have an intraday double top at 10,770. So watch out for that potential zone. Okay. And now we're looking at the uh, the actual uh, uh, trend line here. Okay, so trend line basically uh, states that you have a potential HNS formation or a potential top here. Okay, so again, let's see if we can put in a potential right shoulder here. Okay, so at this zone here, so you have your left shoulder, you have the head, double top, 
now looking for the right shoulder uh, and then obviously looking to reverse so again bear that in mind okay so looking for a, a reversal here okay so as soon as we break this key resistance here at 10730 in the german dax then you open the floodgates down to uh, 10710 okay 10710 then you have 10660 so again german dax certainly or european equity certainly vulnerable and uh, reliance is solely on mr draghi and we'll see how he performs my understanding is given the euro certainly has held at 200 ma if i go to the euro usd in the daily chart you can see we're pushing higher here in the euro usd okay uh, again an argument can be made to potentially test the highs again given the fact that mr draghi is remaining neutral and you are looking at 1.13 1.14 coming into play for the euro usd so again that's going to be interesting okay fox see how the euro reacts see how the um see how the uh, the actual equity markets react as well okay now going back to the german dax again like i said you are you do have support here now at 10 7 30 uh, and then obviously 10 7 10 and 10 6 60 so watch out for those zones in terms of the french cac let's bring up the french cac for you daily chart the french cac i did explain yesterday we were into resistance certainly putting in a potential topping tail given the fact that the daily chart has held gap fill resistance thus far okay 60 minute chart the french cac intraday double top okay so again looking for that double top to hold on the back of a, uh, a lack of draggy action okay so again if we do flush your support level that is seen at 4490 10 minute chart of the uh, the french cac here okay let's just bring this into play okay okay right so again you have this uh, rising uh, channel on the french cac okay so again looking for this to break on the downside intraday double top certainly has been confirmed and again looking for weakness on the french cac so again watch out for this zone and you have 4450 and then down back down to 4540 again as well so if we are disappointed with mr draghi then you are going to see a sell-off in equities okay okay so going over to the FTSE 100 now FTSE 100 again like i did explain um yesterday uh we mr carney was certainly very dovish in his rhetoric okay but that failed really to transpire into real gains given the fact that these sterling uh, a chart of sterling if i just bring that up no real sell-off uh, again it's all about sterling and how sterling interprets the actual uh, price action and no real sell-off no concerted sell-off on the um, on the price of sterling you had 1.13430 you're down about 80 pips that's not nothing substantial so nothing really to justify a, a, a real rally in the FTSE the FTSE itself was rallied today due to China it's mainly due to China Chinese data uh, okay Chinese data by 1.5 percent the import side of things since 2014 I think it's the first rise in imports so again that does board well for European equities given the fact that they are starting to buy uh, European goods or exports so again certainly is considered to be bullish to a large extent so that certainly is a situation there with regards to FTSE now obviously Mr Carney and his uh, dovish rhetoric yesterday is certainly helping to a large extent as well but having said that let's go back to the FTSE again okay daily chart you do have a bull flag now my only concern here is that if the Fed goes ahead and raises rates then commodities are in, in real trouble and then we have this right shoulder which is a failed bull flag that creates an emotive sell-off okay so again brings the HNS formation into play now Mr Khan even though he was dovish yesterday he did state and this is very important that if economic data improves then his stance on QE will, will will shift as well so it was an acknowledgement to a large extent really of the fact that uh, he may well have made a mistake with uh, with obviously injecting QE and, and that mistake won't be repeated so again something to consider 60 minute chart on the FTSE 100 we're into that FIB 61 percent now on the FTSE itself so again looking for resistance here looking for a lower high 10 minute chart the FTSE you are now into pivot R2 resistance pivot R3 is at 6908 6900 you certainly have held a resistance at 6990 so again if we do see a flush and given the fact that we do have an unfilled gap below bear that in mind folks you do have support in this region here which is at 6850 and then like i said gap fill at 6840 so watch out for those two zones below very very important watch out for those two zones okay on that note i think this is a, a market wrap be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the 25% uh, bonus again just to conclude I think it will be a um, a sell-off post Draghi. That's my expectations, given the fact that U.S. markets are into, resi are into resistance. Okay, folks, goodbye now.